Fire Island Beach appeared on charts in the 1850s and folklore suggests the name arose from land-based pirates or wreckers who built beach fires at night to lure cargo ships onto shore. Some say Poison Ivy gave Fire Island its name either for its, for its red leaves in autumn. In the prohib, mm, prohibit, mm, excuse me, in the prohish, mm, prohibition, okay, prohibition, I said it right this time. In the prohibition years of the 1920s, Fire Island's remote location attracted a new crowd of thirsty Mainlanders. To New York's gay theater personalities, the Grove's relaxed p policing suggests, oh, sorry, not policing, policying suggests freedom and safety, though they remain outnumbered by the Allen's wealthy heterosexuals. My first visit to Fire Island was in the summer of 1981. And my last visit was in the fall of 1991. My name is Eric, and welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. I just want to talk about my last time on Fire Island. I was only I was only on there three times, and I think I did a podcast when I went to Fire Island in 1981 for the first time. I did that. Uh, that was 81. I think I think I went again the following year in 82. I went with Robert and Tom. But my last time, and I didn't go back again. That was I only went there t three times. That was the two times. And now I didn't go back again to the fall of 1991. And I had a good friend, I guess at the time, a good friend, Richie. Richie, I talk about Richie because he was the person who took me to the village and East Village and West Village and all to the gay bars. He's the one who got me out of my um, cocoon, I guess. So Richie, I had just bought this brand new, well, it was on brand new. I bought a second hand. 1985, Mercury Lynx. I bought it in 1991. I just bought it. And um, Richie said, well, if you want to break it in to see if, you know, see if anything was wrong with it, he said, let's go to Fire Island. So I said, okay. I haven't been there, goodness, 10 years. I said, okay, let's go to Fire Island. So I got into my secondhand Lynx. Mind you, I was close to 400 pounds. If you know anything about a Mercury Lynx, that damn car is small. And every time I drove in that car, people say, how you fit in this damn car? You're so fat. Anyway, I drove, um, uh, we drove to, I drove, drove to Richie house, okay, pick Richie up. See, Richie was a cheap son of a gun. He didn't want to use his car. He lived in Queens. So I rode to Queens, picked Richie up, and drove my car, my Lynx, all the way to Fire Island. You park the car when you get to, uh, well, before you get to Fire Island. I forgot the name. Is that Sayerville on Long Island? I think it's Sayerville. You take, you park your car in the parking lot, in the ferry parking lot in Sayerville, and you get hop on the ferry and you take the ferry over to Fire Island. That's what we did. I think when we got there, I noticed that Richie was wasn't his old chippy self again. He was in a bar. I think, what's the name of that bar? I forgot the name of the bar. There were two or three bars, big bars. We was in there. But mind you, we didn't get there till like four o'clock. Richie was a, a, a karma vampire. He didn't like to go anywhere until the sun goes down. So we got there like four o'clock in the afternoon. Fire Island. Got into the bar. And um, he got very quiet. The music was blaring. I'm shaking my booty to the beat. And I asked him, well, what's wrong? And then he told me what, why he came to Fire Island. Because the last time he was on Fire Island, and it was a long time for him too, was with 
his friend Eddie. Now, Eddie was a, was more his friend than my friend. And the story with Eddie and uh, about Eddie, Eddie passed away, I think, in the eighties, and Eddie passed away of AIDS. A lot of Richie friends passed away with AIDS, uh, more so him than me. Um, all the people that I knew that passed away with AIDS in the eighties were people that I only knew from the bars. Those were the only people that I, you know. So anyway, he was very depressed. So we walked around and Fire Island. We went to the dunes, which brought back memories for me. The dunes is almost like a pickup. I don't know if I told a story. When I, the last time I was there, I walked the dunes. I was with there with Tommy and, and, uh, and um, Robert. They were, some, they were on the beach, and I went to walk the dunes. And uh, I'm walking along the, the dunes with the... Because they're in the back of people's houses. I remember walking. People was in their backyard. Um, I think it was 4th of July of 82, whatever. So, And I know these lesbians had a party. They saw me, and they all together was yelling out, Beach well, beach well. And I didn't think I liked that. So I kept on walking. Wallowing, I should say. And then I ran into this guy. This is 82. I ran into this guy on uh, Fire Island. I forgot his name. Didn't matter. There was a tree there. And, you know, it was the dunes. I saw a tree with a tree, whatever you want to call him. And, of course, you know what I did. Under the tree, he pulled it out. He, As that Seinfeld Elaine said, he took it out. Well, he took it out, and I took care of it. And that was in 82. And that's the last... Thing I did on Fire Island in 1982. So now it was 1991. I'm with, uh, in the dunes with Richie. And Richie going on about what he did in the dunes. Him and Eddie and the, thing, the people they met. And then we walked on the beach. And it wasn't very pleasant. I mean, for me, it was really weird. And you, you know when you're gay and you have a gay friend who's always up and always joking around. Richard was more like a Paul, Paul Lynn. If who, those of you know who Paul Lynn is. That's how Richie was. Always have a joke. For, always, he always had a joke for everything. So anyway. Um, so we. So we walked around. And then it got late. Uh, you know. The sun went down. We went back into the. Um, you know. Back into the bar. And then I think it was like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. He said, let's go. He was very depressed. And I was, oh, we had to take the last ferry. That's what it was. I think the last ferry was 10 o'clock. We had to get on the last ferry back to the, to the parking lot. Because nobody, we didn't have no way of, we weren't going to stay, sleep on the beach. I mean, it was 1991. I think I was, I was in my 40, I was 40 back then. I wasn't sleeping on the beach at, at that age. So anyway, we got the last ferry back to the mainland and got into the parking lot, started up the car. The car wouldn't start. The Lynx that I bought, I only had it for a week now. I paid $3,000 for it. 1985 Lynx. Wouldn't start. And this is, what is this, uh, Saturday night? I think it was a Saturday night. It wouldn't start. What do you do on a Saturday night? It was nothing to do. Everything was closed. So the only thing to do was to leave the car there until Monday because nobody opens up on Sunday. So we had to leave it there Monday. But then we had to wait for the next train. We missed the last train off the island, off Long Island, back to the city. We missed the last train. The next train was 5 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I said, Richie, we missed the last train. What the hell are we going to do? He said, nothing to do. So what we did, we went, they, they had a straight bar, not far from the parking lot. So we went to the straight bar and, and um, hung out in the straight bar, drank, of course, um, he drank. It was 1991, I wasn't drinking. I filled myself on uh, what they call that uh, cranberry juice. And I just said, it was very sad. I'm not, I wasn't used to seeing somebody who's bubbly and joking around and always have a smart answer for everything was very melancholy and very, for me, it was very sad. And I understood it. I understood it. I mean, I didn't like the fact it was bringing me down. I understood it. And um, 
The bar closed at 4 o'clock. Train don't start at 5 o'clock. So 4 o'clock, we left the bar. We walked the, uh, the train station. We were like, what, two or three blocks from the, from the bar. So we walked to the train station. So we had to wait an hour. So we're waiting, and there's some guy screaming for Michael. I remember this. He was at one end of the train station. We, was, we just got on the train station at the other end, and I heard him yell, Michael, Michael. And it, was, it was like surreal. And his, he was just walking the train, you know, the station. Did you see Michael? And we both said, no, we didn't see Michael. And he's screaming for Michael, Michael. And he's walking. We could hear him. He walked out of the train station. We could hear outside the train station, Michael, Michael. And it, the, the, the interesting thing was the way he was crying for Michael, it was almost for me, and I'm saying to myself in my head, I said, that's probably what Richie was doing in his head, crying for Eddie, the friend that he came there to, to I guess, to say goodbye to. Eddie had passed a while ago. That was the last time he'd been at Fire Island with Eddie. Um, back in the 80s, before Eddie had AIDS. So, anyway, I know it might be sad, but I, it just brought up it's the holidays, and I think it, it. You know, you think about sad things. For me, I do think about sad things during the holidays. So anyway, that's my story. That's my podcast. And if you wanted me to finish it, yeah, we got on the train. We got off. Um, at, uh, Richie lived in in uh, not far from the train station in Queens. So we got off that station. I had to take a, a, a cab. I lived in the Bronx. I had to take a cab to the Bronx. And then Sunday, and I'm not going to do Sunday. Monday, I called. I had to call up um, Sayerville to a, to a mechanic. And um, he, um, well, it wasn't very nice because I had to go back to Fire Island. Because I had the keys, of course. Back to Fire Island. Then I had to go to the, the mechanic and and on a, I should fire I should, should Sayerville back to Sayerville. Then I had to go to the mechanic in Sayerville. He had he got the car towed to his place. He looked at it. He could it's going to take him two or three days to fix. And then, so then I had to get back on the train, back to I I I took it. Well, I think that time I took it to thirty to um, I said thirty fourth Street. I took it to, yeah, back to 34th Street and then just take a subway home. I wasn't going to pay for a cab fare and took a subway home and wait three days and then go back to Sayerville and get my car. Now, mind you, I had just bought that car. It was a 1985 Mercury Lynx. I had just bought it. I only had it for a week. Spent $3,000 on it. Well, to make a long story short... I had that car for maybe about five years, and every year I spent a close to a thousand dollars on fixing it, and that was the last used car I ever bought. All right, I'm finished. Thank you for listening to the craziness that lives inside my head.